Hi, my name is Mike Gaben and welcome to episode 16 of my KSP campaign. And what you see here is the Otter 2. And the Otter 2 is on its way to do some temperature scan. One temperature scan that is below an altitude of about 16 kilometers, one at an altitude of above 18 kilometers, and one on the surface. And it's that altitude above 18 kilometers is the reason why I have this particular plane because as you can see it has itself a rocket engine which right now is not activated. Uh, and the purpose of that rocket engine is that I can fire it for a brief period of time and uh, get this thing up to an altitude of gets up to about 20 kilometers or so. You've seen me use this before. I used it a couple of episodes ago to do a similar sort of contract. Uh, the big thing that's different about this one though is that these particular uh, waypoints are a respectable distance away. They're a good way around onto the other side of Kerbin, as you can see here in this map. The blue line uh, is showing me my, my uh, path thus far, uh, beginning, of course, at the Kerbal Space Center. And uh, you can see where the waypoints are coming up. The one that I'm heading for first is the most northern one, which is the one that is the uh, scan below an altitude of 16.4 kilometers. And then I figure I'll do the high altitude one and then I'll land on the surface. Now I've never really put this thing to the test as far as range goes. So um, in order to extend the range as much as I can, I've cut my throttle to about half so I'm flying at a little bit of a lower altitude than I otherwise would be, trying to sort of just stretch the fuel as far as it can go but it became pretty apparent pretty quickly that uh, this was going to be a, a one-way journey for Jeb. Not that Jeb's going to die at the other end of it, hopefully, but that I won't be able to fly back to the Kerbal Space Center. And be, I mean, right here, for instance, I'm about halfway to the Kerbal Space Center, or halfway to my destination, I'm sorry, and uh, I've used up about half my fuel. So clearly, when I get there, I'm going to be on fumes as it is just to finish off this piece particular missions. Um, so, well, what that means is I'll have to land it uh, at the landing spot to collect that last temperature scan, and uh, then I'll have to pick up Jeb from there. So I'm going to be losing some value on this thing on the recovery cost, but oh well, the main thing is just to, to finish off the mission. So um, here we are, we're closing in on that first temperature scan and pick that up without uh, much in the way of issues at all. And it's then that I realized that, wow, I really didn't plan this very well because the high altitude scan is that waypoint that's the furthest to the south. And Pilot's Bane is the one I have to land at. So, you know, if I'm going to do this, well, I got to go all the way to that southern one and then fly up to the one, the landing one, if I'm going to finish this off. And so I said, no, 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 this is not going to work. I'm going to have to put up, you know, do the high altitude one at some other time. So I picked the pilot's bane and decided I'm just going to put this thing down. But then all of a sudden I was really, well, Jesus, you know, this is the one plane that can reach th these high altitudes. Um, it would be a pain to have to uh, go through all this again. So why don't I do the high altitude one now? And then uh, I can bring the Otter 1 out here to do the landing. So I changed my mind. I went and picked the high altitude one down uh, that's the down furthest to the south. I'm, I, I'm thinking I probably have enough fuel to get there. But then when I actually checked my fuel reserves and really thought about it, I realized no, 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 I don't. Because the moment I fire up that rocket engine, it's going to burn through the fuel very, very quickly. And I'm already dipping into the fuel reserves that were there for the rocket engine. So, and if I fire that rocket engine and then just burn all my fuel, I got to do an unpowered landing which I probably can do, but I'd rather not risk it. I'm also noticing at this point that I never did put a parachute on this particular vessel, so if Jeb can't land it, well, that will be the end of Jeb. So I decided, no, all of that is way, way too risky. Let's just put this thing down, uh, collect that surface temperature scan, uh, play it a little bit safe, and then we'll send the Otter to... I'm going to try and... I'm gonna, fix up the Otter 2 a little bit, so maybe send a little bit of an improved Otter 2 out here uh, to finish off this particular contract. Now you may have noticed that the mission time on that last mission was about an hour and a half now, although most of that was done at two time speed, that still was a pretty long mission 
uh, with pretty poor res or with pretty minimal results. So, you know, certainly part of me wanted to just say, forget it and just cancel the contract. And I thought, no, no, no. You know what? I'll tweak the otter too. I'll get it to be a little bit better. I'll get it back out there. I, I can get this whole thing to work. Now, I don't want to make too many changes to the otter too, especially I don't want to put on really much in the way of new parts because I want this build to be quick. I want to get this contract over with. The first thing I noticed, and I noticed this while I was flying it, that I have that swivel rocket engine on the back. That makes no sense. I don't need the gimbling. It's like half a ton heavier, no, a quarter ton heavier than the Reliant engine, and the Reliant engine has a better vac or atmospheric uh, ISP, so I'll get better efficiency out of it. So that made no sense. That was just a mistake on my part. So I swapped out that engine, put on that Reliant engine on the back. Um, also drained the monoprop. That was for no reason. I have monoprop in the cockpit, so that shed a little bit of weight on that. And then I put on a parachute just in case things start to go bad. Hopefully Jeb will be able to bail out and get himself to safety. And after a quick test fly, everything seemed to be working perfectly fine. So push this a uh, little bit of a tweak uh, Otter 2 into the building queue. Uh, it's going to take three days to build, so that's not so bad. Uh, and we'll come back to it a little bit later in this video. But before we do, let's spend a little bit of time with something else. This is Junk Sat 1, and the, the contract is uh, a contract to put a satellite into a very specific orbit about Kerbin. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the mission and the contract uh, when the time comes to launch. But I wanted to show you a couple of things that I've been talking about but haven't really shown you, and those are these smart parts. So I'm going to put on this fuel sensing smart part onto the booster here, and its default behavior is to um, wait until the tank is empty and to stage. So that will stage those boosters once that booster is empty. And then I'll put on this altimeter smart part, um, it senses altitude, and again, you can then get it to trigger some things. So I'm going to set this to be at an altitude of 50 kilometers. I also want it to stage, and the job of this guy is going to be to uh, pop the fairings at 50 kilometers. And uh, you can also attach the triggers to not just be staging, but to be action groups. So I'm a little bit limited when it comes to action groups right now. And you know, with a little bit of imagination, these, these little parts become they're very simple to use, but they're very, very powerful at the same time. And then the other thing I want to show you is how you use real shoots in the VAB now that I have basic action groups. So what you do is you select the parachute, and then you click on the action group icon up there at the top, and you have all of these properties that you can adjust about the parachute. It's amazing. By the way, as you're looking over there on the right, you can see JunkSat 1's gone through some changes <laughs> since the last one. That's the joy of design. And again, I'll talk about the design when I go to launch this thing. So what I'm going to do, the, I've, I've got selected the parachutes that are on the booster. So I'm going to change the pre-deployment altitude to uh, 4 kilometers. And then I'm going to save it and apply it. And it gets saved to the vessel uh, so that later on you you don't have to change this while you're in flight. You can also save it as a preset so that, um, you know, certain parachutes can, um, you know, always behave in the same way. So you don't have to go through this all the time. And you can save different presets for different parachutes. It's really useful. You can also change the material of the parachute, uh, silk, nylon, and Kevlar. Basically, what you're doing is you're, you're sacrifice. When you go to silk, you're sacrificing mass. In other words, you're, you're losing mass but you're also uh, losing drag and durability. So do you want really, you know, parachutes that are not going to break and are going to slow your vessel down quickly, or do you want parachutes that are light? Well, depending on your situation, you might want different things. And as you can see, there are tons of other properties down there that you can also change, and I'm certainly not going to go through them, but, um, may, you know, it's a great thing to have. Now this menu is a little hidden. When I first started playing with real shoots, it actually took me a while to find this. I ended up finding it by mistake. So again, to get this particular menu, what you do is you select the parachute you want to work with, and then you click on the action groups icon and this, this uh, little menu comes up. Great, great uh, feature to have. And after pushing Junksat 1 into the building queue, I had enough money left over to upgrade the tracking station. So this will be a great one. This will give me patch conics and maneuver nodes. So uh, that will be awesome. Again, it's going to take a little while because of Kerbal construction time. It's going to take about 11 days or so. Let's see. 
Yeah, about 11 days for the tracking station to upgrade, but once it does, that will be very, very useful. Now it's time, speaking of the tracking station, let's check on uh, some of the vehicles that we have uh, floating around in orbit. And the one I'm interested in particular is this debris that I have floating around in orbit. You may recall, uh, uh, this is from the uh, Kerstock 5. Oh, well, first of all, I got Ribfell's debris. I don't know about you, but uh, that annoys me that that's there. That's his capsule that he was in. And normally I don't like de deleting debris. I think I should get debris down naturally. But considering that KSP is the one that put that up there, I'm going to delete it. And this is my debris from the Kerstock 5. And it's in orbit until I decide to uh, to ride it down. And, and I, I, I pick a time to ride it down when I think it's going to end up hitting the surface close to Kerbal Space Center so I can maximize my return. And looking at where the periapsis was, that looked like a good time to do it right there. And just to remind people how this works, um, I left this debris in orbit with a periapsis of about 50 kilometers. And that clearly puts it in the atmosphere, but it's not low enough in the atmosphere that... Uh, KSP will consider it destroyed. So it'll continue to orbit around indefinitely as long as it's not the target vehicle. And then once you come to the moment where you think, oh, it's going to land pretty close to the Kerbal Space Center, all you got to do is make it the target vehicle and ride it down. Now, it's kind of ironic. Uh, I just spent all this time talking about the, um, the attributes and wonderfulness of uh, real shoots but you'll see here that I still have some issues. Um, I have been noticing that when I use the staging button to uh, arm the parachutes while in space, I get this failure notice. And right now I can't arm the parachutes because this thing has, not only does it have no connection, it doesn't have a probe body. It's completely dumb. I have no way of uh, controlling this thing at all. So unfortunately the parachutes are not armed. Now I decided to ride it down anyway, even though I, I knew for pretty much for sure that those parachutes weren't going to deploy. Um, I think I just need to get in the habit of deploying them before I leave the atmosphere. I'm hoping, I, I think that will solve the problem. I had similar issue in some issues in some earlier episodes you might recall. Um, I guess the other option is to use a smart part. I could use a smart part probably to deploy the parachutes once it gets down to a certain altitude. I might give that a try as well. But this is a little bit uh, frustrating. Anyway, it's a good experiment. It's good to see how this thing tracks um, through the atmosphere. It goes, it, it's pretty much locked on that retrograde vector, which is great because that means most of the heat of reentry is taken up by the engines, which are the most durable part. Um, and that's fantastic. When I used to play this with um, far and, and near and, and, and those types of atmospheric mods back while KSP was in development, um, I found those mods, I think their aerodynamic models were a little bit more complex and this thing would tumble about and all this kind of stuff. And I would end up having to put air brakes at the top of the um, stage in order to lift the center of drag so that I get it to, dra to track properly. But this tracks effortlessly and absolutely nothing exploded and in fact if you even look here I'm coming down really really close to where the Kerbal Space Center is I mean there's the island airport for goodness sakes this would have been a great uh, I would have recovered most of my cost except of course none of the parachutes deployed so oh well that's what it is but uh, we'll get this sorted out eventually but for now, it's time to cut a few days into the future and join Svetlana now in the rebuilt Otter 2 on her way out to the waypoint. Uh, getting pretty close here and what the heck? Coolant leak has begun to leak from an engine. Oh great, you've got to be kidding me. Coolant has begun to leak from an engine, okay. What does that mean? <laughs> I mean, other than the obvious that coolant's leaking from the engine, but what does that mean? Uh, is the, the engine still going? That's pretty obvious. Does it mean it's going to overheat soon? Probably best to uh, let's turn down the throttle a little bit. That would probably be a good idea. That would probably be prudent. It doesn't seem to be losing thrust. Oh, okie dokie. 
gold isn't good. This is obviously, by the way, the dang it mod. Dang it strikes again. <laughs> the dang it mod, which spontane, you know, generates sort of these random failures. Though I'm not really sure exactly what this means. If if I can just keep flying this way, if eventually this engine's going to overheat or it's just going to flat out stall on me. For now, I'm going pretty good. But I think, yeah, what I'll do is I'll just keep pressing forward. I mean, all I gotta do is get to that one waypoint, get up to uh, the 18 kilometers, and then we'll deal with everything else then. You can see that I've toggled on the temperature gauges. You do that by just hitting F10. Um, that's just so I can monitor the temperature on that engine, should I need to. Right now, it's not indicating any problem, despite it being red, but that's just, dang, it's showing that it's red because it's highlighting it, that's all. Um, I do have some temperature gauges that are all on the, uh, landing gear but none of those are presenting any issues at this time so I'm just going to ignore that and we're now five minutes down the road everything's going fine and then oh entering sector P2CQ let's pitch up and put on that engine and what I'm looking for is to get that apoapsis just a little bit over maybe about 18 and a half kilometers something like that pitching straight oh oh engine just cut off that wasn't me, it just uh, flamed out there. Oh, what the heck? Why is it out of fuel? I still see I got liquid fuel. There's no way I ran out of oxidizer. And I'm clearly not going to make it. What's going on here? Oh, oh man, all the liquid fuel's in the forward tank. Oh, you stupid rocket engine. Why couldn't you use that liquid fuel? Oh, you don't. Well, I gotta abandon this now. I mean, whether I had enough fuel to get up there or whether I didn't is rather irrelevant now. Oh, and you can see other thing. I got temperature gauges all over the place. What's heating up? The materials bay is heating up. Those batteries are heating up. I got one landing gear going in the yellow. Everything's cool. Oh shoot! Oh, I still got fuel for the engines. Maybe this was for the best. I don't know. Um, maybe it was for the best because if 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 I kept on going, I probably would have burned up all my liquid fuel if the liquid fuel was all in the tank at the back. And then I would have been forced to do an unpowered landing. Um, I don't know. You do that with shuttles all the time, so it's probably it's certainly doable. But this is now just about getting Svetlana safely on the ground and uh, just ending this mission. As fortune would have it, the ground below me turned out to be relatively flat, so putting it down actually turned out to be not too big of a deal. In fact, even though I had the fuel to spare. Uh, I ended up doing an unpowered landing without any drama or problems whatsoever. So getting this down on the ground turned out to be pretty uneventful. So Atlanta's fine. <laughs> Had to recover. I probably took a loss on this particular one because I ended up deciding to just cancel the particular contract. Um, I mean, I could try and build a plane, but remember I am working with another plane. And I am working with the uh, just a Tier 1 space hangar and a Tier 1 runway so I do have a, quite a lot of constraints on my plane um, but even if I could manage to build the plane that to get up go further distances and still get up to a high altitude um, it would still take at least a dozen or two dozen days to build the thing and I don't want this contract hanging around that long and I'm just tired of it so I decided to cancel it remember that canceling mm -hmm. a contract mm -hmm. only removes the money you were initially forwarded so it's not that big a deal, and uh, I got some other contracts that I can pick up to replace it any that I'd rather do. Like, for instance, this rescue Glyphia? Glyphia? Glyphia. Mm -hmm. Glyphia Kerman. Yeah, that's the one. I mean, I could always use more Kerbals. Easy money, just picking them out of orbit. Uh, yeah, so I think that is a more useful one. And in fact, it forwards me almost as much money as what I lose by canceling the um, that temperature mm -hmm. survey contract. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I did cancel one, pick up the other one, but completing these contracts is going to have to be for a future episode. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.